So where do we take it from here, Johnny? Let's talk about nitrogen applications and utilizing carbon. Okay. To help with that. Perfect. So um, one thing that's unique about carbon, when you think of the element um, periodic table, it has four places that it can attach to. Um, and what's nice too is biology prefers to have organic sources because they use the carbon as food. Okay. So when I utilize split applied nitrogen with carbon, number one, I want that carbon to tie up that nitrogen, make it an organic form. Not only with that, if you do your simple, simple carbons, okay, like sugars, that would be your very simple, easy to break down. And then um, fulvics are going to help get that into the plant. Biology loves that. Uh, in those situations, you're pretty much re- trying to replicate. I'm not going to say it's hundred percent replication, but trying to replicate this organic nitrogen source that we have on the Haney test. Okay. So we apply sugar, we apply fulvic acid with that nitrogen to give it a carbon to tie to plants prefer having biology waste as their food source. You know, it gives connection, shoots it back. So we're trying to make that step easier by adding it in there. And that's why um, I love in season putting nitrogen. If you're putting nitrogen on that, you're adding at least fulvic acid or sugar or some sort of carbon source. Um, If you're looking to quote unquote tie up, if Mm -hmm. you want to call it that or get it connected, humic acid is the way to go. So, a lot of your earlier applications, or you know you're only going to do two passes of, of nitrogen, or even this field it just gets one pass. That's how we farm this ground. Yeah. Humic, mm-hmm. if it's early on, because it's going to help keep it in the right form. Okay. Um, I'm not going to lie. This is why I love Google Scholar. You know, is going on Google Scholar um, and searching humic acid yeah. and, say, infects of in plants or in corn or in wheat, um, and you can just start looking at articles and see, seeing those benefits, you know, I'd be the first one to, gosh, you talked to me five years ago. I would, you talked about humic acids. I'd be like, eh, I don't know yet. You know, but after books I've read, reading the research and now seeing it in person. Yeah. Gosh, there's so much truth there, you know, giving the biology what they need to. Well, if you just take, if you just take the science side Mm -hmm. of function. Yep. And you just lay it out. A plus B equals C. Yep. You know, take, take, I mean, I don't know if you can take agriculture out, but you take, you just take how cycles in life work, whether you're talking about human, I, I, human blood test is an, is a fascinating thing to look yeah. at because so many things in there are similar. We're similar to soil function. And I, that's a pretty bold thing to say. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> Gosh, we eat plants. We eat animals that eat plant that eat plants from the ground. I mean, it's you talk. You look at a, an imbalance in a human blood test, and interestingly enough, plants sometimes can have similar effects, yeah. or you know, negative effects, positive effects. You know, low iron, low iron ha- leads to X Y Z. Low calcium leads to X Y Z. You know, so on and so forth. So. You can even take take exact applied things in agriculture out of the equation. Just talk about balance and nature, or b- balance in general. Yes. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a whole side tangent. Well, I just get to the point, it doesn't matter if it's human health. I mean, primarily in row crops or agriculture is usually what's right for Mother Nature. I am a firm believer is right for the pocketbook. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and that's something I'll I'll die on that hill. Sure. Now it may not be a short term ROI, but mm-hmm. over a grand scheme of an operation and trying to pass that ground so it's better for the next generation. Yeah. Gosh dang, what's what's right for Mother Nature is usually right for the pocketbook in the grand scheme of things. Sure. Well, and trying to pay attention to what something soil and plants need, yes. versus what we just think it needs. Yes. Because that's yes. two totally, totally different. different things. Yeah, and I guess like, that's one thing I got to thank goodness you're here to help clarify that because that statement can be taken the, the wrong way too. Absolutely. You know, it could. And, yeah. And what I mean is just being intentional with everything yes. that we're doing. Asking why. Yes. Why, why are you doing that? And not a questioning of someone's 
intellect um, more the the reason. Yes. Ask yourself. Just ask yourself. You can't be honest with yourself, man. I mean, that we, then there's other problems. Yeah. But you know, why am I? Why am I putting all my nitrogen up front? Why am I split applying? You know, should I be? Does it make most financial sense? Um, you know, irrigation, whole different other topic. Yep. Herbicide use, trait selection, cover crops, no cover crops, tillage, no tillage. You know, why are you doing it? Yes. And that will, if you can become, I, you'll become a better farmer, you'll become a better person, a better manager of an operation if you can be completely honest with yourself and realize, because I was. Dude, I was doing things like I was just doing it because that just to do it. I think we all do things like that. But then why am I doing that? Yeah. If you can have the why and then realize I didn't need to do it on 500 acres, I needed to do it on 180 acres, and the rest, I was just doing it just to do it. Yeah. Hmm. You took a look at input cost saved, time saved, so on and so forth. And then you start, you you do that, you go down that road, and you start to realize how much time you might have been wasting, how much more an intention, just put being intentional is profitable. Yep. Not necessarily in application, but maybe application saved. Yes. You know? Just time. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, I think about herbicide. Dude, there was a field, uh, I was doing fall burn down on some fields last fall, and I had I had two four D and some dicamba and some Roundup loaded up. And I was sitting there and I, I walked the field, I didn't find a single blade of grass. Single blade of grass, falling corn and beans. Okay. I'm like, why am I putting Roundup in? There's no grass out here. I know the two four D or the the dicamba is gonna take out the the mare's tail and yep. the winter annual just the whole winter annuals yeah so, yeah why am i putting roundup in so i pulled roundup out come out this spring in a couple of fields i had maybe on a 60 acre field i had three clumps of volunteer wheat okay <laughs> does Th- that three just clumps yeah are you kidding me? i know gosh dang it i'm a terrible person <laughs> and i'm like you know and it's, you kind of drive by it's like oh that's irritating just bushy green growing out there walk out there and pull it you know but same thing. It's like, yeah. what? Okay, if I just sprayed a fall burn down on, you know, 1,500 acres, 2,500 acres at a roundup last fall, cost $20 a gallon, I want to say. Yeah. So I ran a quart, five bucks, on five bucks on 2,000 acres. It's 10 grand. Yeah. That's 10 grand that I didn't actually, that, that I really don't think I saw a return from. Yeah. So. Whoa, way far away from carbon we're, tonight. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're going to hit reverse here, and we're going to come back. Bring this back in. And you- Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full-length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major plat- podcast platforms. Um, we're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content 